All right, so we're here in Bentley Pasco's fish room. He has a YouTube channel. We'll link to that, of course. But I've never been here, and we're starting with what I love, and that is a giant guppy tank, a man after my own heart. So tell me details, what you think is cool, all that stuff. You know how this goes. Sure. Um, so these are a really specific line of guppy. Uh, these are the Blue Hawaiian Moscow, which were originally bred by Luke Roebuck. Wow. Um, he's since passed away. I was going to say, is he even alive anymore? Uh, about, I think, seven years ago now. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's kind of a story with these fish. Um, I chased them for like two years when I first got in the hobby because I found pictures of them online and I couldn't find them anywhere. Yeah. And I finally found some on some guy on eBay. And your typical eBay fish story, they got in, they, they didn't live a week. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's my fault questionable but the the genetics something was really weak with them well lo and behold on this tiny tiny forum um that we have in here called wafish box yeah somebody posted that they needed a new home for their guppies and i i just kind of messaged them because they said they were blue guppies and i was sure. like well okay what 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 could they be and i get talking to this gal named leanne super nice lady She's older. She needs like double hip and double knee replacement, so she can't take care of her fish anymore. She's like, "Oh, I have these blue Moscows that I got from Luke Roebuck." And in the back of my head, I went, "Then no way. There is no <laughs> way. This is a fish I've been chasing." So we get to talking, and she had bought a breeding trio, and then started buying more of them about once a year to keep the wow. stock diverse. Yeah. And she kept in good contact with him while he was still alive. And she had quite a few of them so it was a about a three hour drive from where i am to pick them up um i had just got this 140 gallon acrylic and that's where i knew they were gonna go um nice. so of course like all of mine are kind of a mishmash of plants some mm -hmm. kind of crazy jungle i've actually just done a lot of work to this tank so it's not as grown in as it usually is but the cool things to me um other than the guppies which I just like shipped a bunch. It was kind of like my first time shipping fish. So okay, it's, like, it's a little sparse. We should address that right now. Do you ship fish on the internet because people are going to go nuts? And so um, we, can, we can go like maybe in the future or something. Yeah, like, but so that's going to be the number one question. Right, right, instantly. So it's very sparing, just because my work schedule is really rough. Um, yeah. I'm very typically leaving my house at six thirty seven a.m. and I'm not home until eight thirty p.m. Yep. So getting to the post office to ship is incredibly hard. It's like a Saturday only job. Uh, and even then, like, I don't like shipping Saturday because there's right. kind of this weird risk laying over. Uh -huh. Even though I've gotten a little better, I did some test ships to like four people at first. Yeah. I learned a couple lessons and thankfully all the fish that went out this last week, everybody arrived healthy, not a single loss. I felt really good about that because it was a lot of fish and I was a little paranoid. <laughs> because it was a holiday week. Yep. But um, it's one of those things where like, I, I will talk about it ahead of time. And it's gonna be one of those things where like, I will have a set day where I'm basically, I have to take a day off of work to do it. And I plan it three or four months in advance. And then I kind of announce it a month in advance. And they can find that on your YouTube channel? It'll be on my channel. Usually okay. it's on my community page, especially. All right. Um, I really like using my community page. Me uh, too. <laughs> I, I love the community page, yeah. it's great. Anyway. So, all right, just the, wanted to get that so out of the way. Like, the cool part to me is what I've done with the Java firm. Mm -hmm. So. I'd gotten these two or three, they've kind of broken into pieces over time. Massive pieces of choya wood from an employee of yours yep. who gave them to me as a gift. And I had a ton of baby Wendelov that had come from the first Wendelov I bought on wood from your store. Nice. <laughs> Most of my beginner plates all came from you in one way, shape, or form. And I had this idea, I was like, well, it has a, the, the choya wood is so much bigger with these big logs, what if we just press the babies into each little hole and just see what happens yeah. while they hang in there? So my roommate and I spent probably like an hour and a half friction fitting all these baby plants in. And now you come, you know, a year and a half or so later and it looks like this. And it's, you know, yeah. there's another piece that's in another tank we'll see. And it just, it looks way better than I ever thought it would have. Um, and I, I just, it was some, one of those things where it was like, this will be a fun experiment. Let's see if this works. And it worked. Nice. Which is probably the story of most of my plant career. <laughs> let's try it. Let that work. Let's, let's just try it. Yeah. Who mm. says I can't do X? 
So oh. one thing I do notice, is yep. this not on a something? No, so this, when I got the tank, it came with an FX6 okay. and an Eheim uh, 2217. Yeah. So like you can see this mass of plants floating up here. Mm -hmm. This is a really cool plant called Lindernia, which is the very good variety. The Lindernia rotundifolia, and then sometimes they call it the watermelon version. Yeah, that? this this is the variegated. It's um, sometimes called this India species. Okay. Um, I let it float for a while on purpose because I wanted to get uh, immersed growth happening to make it yeah. flower. And it uh -huh. had a bunch of flowers recently. Were they now, blue? Uh, they're white with okay. blue spots. Okay. And, well, more like splotches, really, yeah. but really, really cool. Um, and it was kind of one of those things where just like I've tried a bunch of different experiments. We used to be able to get that plant, but the farms don't make it anymore for it's, us. It's, you know, it's funny because I, I loved it. It's <laughs> so pretty. Yeah. That that bright white veining that's in it, and then that small kind of round green leaf. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a mix of rotala and bacopa. Yeah. And it's just a very very pretty plant. Speaking of immersed growth, that's like a yeah. This is farm over here. this thing has become like. Part of my work schedule made it so that this tank got a lot of neglect as far as really rapid trimming. Um, I, I kind of preach a thing that I call plants for profit. Yeah. And this was one of my primary grow tanks. And stuff started growing out. And I started really liking the way it looked. Sure. And I kind of kept cultivating it that way. Like this is due for its next major trim mm -hmm. in probably two weeks or so. Um, just based on my schedule. But is this like Willow Hygro here? No, so this is a, <laughs> this is actually a kind of new, new-ish. This is a Persicaria species huh. uh, that comes from India. And the, is that the, one that we pink underwater? Yeah, so it's gonna have a kind okay. of a pinky orange color. It's really interesting. And you can see it when light shines through in the back of the leaf a little bit. I feel like it ha it's like Persicaria and then like something crazy with a K. Is well, there's that one? no. This is the species okay. India. There is a different one. I know which one okay. you're talking about. The one that's neat about this, in like you can see it over on this leaf here, they get these oh, cool wow. like purpley splotches that are kind of vaguely heart shaped. Yeah. But only when it comes out of the water. Yeah, because there's one on this leaf too. And right, and as and you'll see as the the leaf matures, that splotch comes in. Huh. And then you know there's some other stuff that's coming out. Like this is Ludwigia pansanol here. Yep. Um, there's some like this is your mermaid weed or mm -hmm. sawtooth hygro. There's like a million different names for that. Um, uh, there's all sorts of like rotalas and alternantheras and stuff that are growing out of this. And kind of each one is a, a fun experiment for me to see what it looks like when it breaks surface and what will break surface. Mm -hmm. and the small plant people are wondering is, I'm guessing Rickia. Yes, yeah. that stuff's the devil sometimes. <laughs> It's great when you want it and horrible when you don't. Yeah, when you when you don't want it anymore, uh, I, I will you can't give, ever get rid of it. I will give a kudos. There's like no duckweed. So Yeah, I try really hard yeah. not to have duckweed. I, you'll see some tanks that have duckweed and that is a, a long struggle and fight. The fish in here is sweet. They're one of my favorites, right? Yeah, so this um, this is a Kochu Tetra. I remember bringing these back in for you like Correct. a couple years ago or Correct. more. Correct. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've lost... That's some... back when I still worked in the store all the time. Yeah, you still actually used to be in the store. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it took you like six months to find these. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a haul. And I remember every time I'd come in, like, I'm still trying to find those fish. I'm still trying to find yeah. those fish. I haven't forgot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. They'll get there when they get here. Then... Yeah, so this is my, what I call my raising rack. Okay. Um, and... It's, it's had some small evolutions over time, but most of this is rainbow fish. That's my primary fish I do. Okay. Um, I'm, like you can see with giant tape labels, what's mm -hmm. in each tank where it matters or um, they're written on the glass, one of the two. But so we have a lot of, most of these fish are about a year old with the exception of the Etnaensis here. Okay. And the Ewer over there. Those are, I got those at AGA, direct from Gary. Yeah, Gary Mr. Lang, Mr. Lang, Lang know, just yeah. to be specific. Um, and you can actually see where I've been experimenting with some of my former immersed growth to see how well it handles no CO2, low light, which, you know, it's got to convert and all that stuff, so it's mm -hmm. not handling it very well. Yeah. So again, kind of a plant experiment where you might not expect it in a raising tank, but sure. there's a couple of fairly rare rainbows here. Um, the Ewers, 
which are basically brand new to the hobby. Okay. When they color up, they look like a goldie eye Dakai. So that's a pale, mm -hmm. kind of a pale blue body with red orange fins, but they stay the same size as a Praycox rainbow. Oh wow! So that's about that as big cool. as they get. They don't get very much see, bigger I was thinking, than they oh, are. Oh, they got to grow out still and all that. So. And I've you can see like a spawning mops in there. I've just started to get eggs out of them. They're kind of just starting to get used to it. Yeah. Um, but but beside them is uh, kind of my I guess you'd say my crown jewel as far as I'm concerned, which is the Melanotania species from Running River. Okay. Is the Running River Rainbow? Yeah. Um, there's this massive story online. There's a great video about it. Basically. A small group of scientists on about 11 grand saved this fish from extinction. Nice. And there's only a few of us in the U.S. that have this fish. It's getting a little more prolific now, which is good because there's only about 4,000 or so of them in the wild right now. There's not very many of these fish at all. Um, and they're just, as they color up, which, you know, in a bare bottom tank, they're not going to do that very much. Mm -hmm. Black substrate, black back, they're going to do that more. All right, what do we got going on this little bad boy? So these are some of the fish that grew up. Okay. Um, from my previous batches. So there's goldie eyed Dakais that are just starting to color up, which would be like these guys over here. Mm -hmm. um, you got one little Herbert Axel Rod Eye Rainbow, and then these are Melanotania Parvas, the big fatter yep. ones. And I, when I moved them, they let all their color go. Nice. <laughs> it used to be like bright orange for the two mm -hmm. boys that are in there, and now they're like, nah. Not for a while, man. Let me ask the great debate. So I, yeah. I can see that you have the Seachem title, title yeah. but you also have AquaClear. Yes. And so if someone said, I'm going to give you one, you can have one or the other, that way it takes the price out and all that, which one would you choose? Like, you've obviously used both, what do you like better? Man, so I think right now, just because of the fish I keep, mm -hmm. I would take the title. Okay, and what, what brings you to that? Um, slightly higher flow rate. Okay. So the rainbows typically like a little more flow when they can mm -hmm. get it. They like that recyclic rate. Um, that being said, I think they're on par with each other. I think the C chem at retail is a little too expensive for what it is. Yeah. Which I, I know you've said that in the past. Um, and there's there's some small problem. I think if you could fuse the two together. Yes. You take it a couple features the from best. the C chem yeah. and you would take some of the build quality from that. You would have possibly the best hang on back ever. Mm -hmm. um, that really the only con I would ever have is if you're not really diligent about your water level, the skimmer portion of that sea chem gets so loud. Yeah, true. But if you're diligent about it, it's a pretty nice little filter. All right. But then again, so is the AquaClear. That thing, I swear you could run it over with a truck and it'd keep yeah. running. So. That's, and that's the thing is, I have to take the price out because I feel like if you include the price, the AquaClear wins every time. Yeah. For uh, me. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. This is a lot of Shellies. Yeah. And I, it's funny because like some of the fish that shipped were Shellies. Okay. And um, You wouldn't know it by looking at the tank. There's a billion of them. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I think the weird thing I do here is I don't like this tank. Okay. Almost ever. Uh, I have to get to the depths of winter before I break a light out. Okay. Because I've found with the Shellies, especially these are the, the Neolamprologus multifasciata, so multis. Okay, yep. For those of you who are Shelly fans, you'll know there's a bunch of cool ones. This is this is that one. Mm -hmm. um, when I don't cover them with any light, even like a Phoenix Stingray, yeah. which is not that powerful, and I leave it ambient, they're way more social. Hmm. You can You can be right in front of the tank, you put your hand over the tank, you can work in the tank and they're way less scared. They don't just go hide all the time. Nice. They're out and about a lot more with just the kind of very light, ambient light we have in this room. Um, and it was it was something I just noticed kind of on a whim because yeah. I used to have a light over this. And the second I took it away, like being up high water column, put a camera in front of them, they're not yeah. really that scared. Um, and they're just, they're such a cool fish. Like every couple of water changes, I'll flatten out all their sand and it ticks them off. but. Then they re-engineer everything completely new, and it's it's really fun to watch these guys do what they do. Nice. All right. So now we're in. Is this like the living room? I don't know. Uh, we we kind of call it the display room or the parlor. Okay. Yeah. The front room. <laughs> um, so this is where more of my like bigger community tanks are. Um, this of course is like my first big tank when I came back to the hobby. Um, Obviously, rainbow fish, which is my primary, primary love and joy. 
this was this has been running for about three years now. Okay. And it's been uh, a massive labor of love and not thinking I knew what I was doing and not knowing what I was doing at the same time. You know, um, like when I first came back to the hobby, I really tried wanted to try my hand at like aquascaping. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see like some minor hardscape and some vague ideas of what I thought would look interesting. And then it turned out I, I just really liked letting plants do their thing and growing plants. And I kind of gave up on <laughs> trying to do aquascaped sure. hardscapes. Um, I care more about like, you know, these big colorful fish. Mm -hmm. it was like when I was a kid, the, the coolest thing ever was discus. And if you could keep discus, you were amazing. Yeah. But as a kid, I never could. We were big like angelfish and tetras and danios. That was our thing when I was a kid in my family. Mm -hmm. And when I came back to the hobby, I was doing all this research. And it was a your tour of Gary Lang's fish room. Because oh. I'd really never seen rainbows. Sure. And I hadn't gone to very many stores. So I hadn't really looked at a lot of them. When I saw all those, I was like, that's Bozeman eye. I want that. Huh, that's interesting. And um, there was a person who, they were moving to Alaska. They had to bring all their fish in because they couldn't find a home for them. So they brought them to the store. Yeah. And I got a call from one of your employees. I remember this really specifically. It's like, hey, a bunch of adult rainbow fish just came in. They're in quarantine for a week. Can you come down to the store? I was like, I'll be there tomorrow. And I, I came in the next day, I talked to Robert and was just like, yeah, just how much for all of them? Yeah. I just want them all. I was like, uh, yeah, I'll work out something for you. You know, we, we still need to finish quarantine. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Finish quarantine. You know, I want to pay you for the meds and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just work me a deal. And most of them started there. And like, I lost some of them. They were all adults. Yeah. They, they eventually have passed. But there's some other stuff that I've got later that is far rarer. Most of these are common rainbow fish. You know, mm -hmm. you've got turquoise, the, the Erians or the red rainbow, Bozeman eye, um, some Australian rainbows. They're specifically Australis. Um, there's, and then there's like the kind of rarer, but not super rare, where there's like a Goiter River group mm -hmm. in here. And then the rarest, like this is my, my male Goldie eyed guy who's sparred himself too hard and hurt himself on the side. There. Yeah. <laughs> Which rainbows do it. They're not the smartest fish in the world. And then my <laughs> really old, decrepit Parkinson eye in the back. Yeah. He's, 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 I'm doing my best to keep him going, but he's kind of at the end. Yeah, he's probably struggling to get food. and. You know, we, we really specifically actually, like, we'll put a hand in and fence fish away to feed him. Okay. I, 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 I don't, I'm one of those people, like, I'm a big softie at heart, so, like, I take yeah. care of fish. Like, there's a rainbow that this guy here is a hybrid mm -hmm. that somehow like some of the fish spawned in the tank and he he lived on a plant and ended up in another tank and i kind of yeah. watched him and when he knew he's a hybrid your big rainbow keepers are like you just euthanize it and get rid right. of it right it's like no i'm a big sovereign he'll just go in the community tank where i don't breed anything yeah and he'll just live out his life and you can tell it's a hybrid because it's dull and ugly yep you know rainbows when you hybridize them unlike cichlids they're dull and ugly you keep their their bloodlines pure they're gorgeous uh, and then this is kind of just a, an homage to easy plants. Yeah. Like nothing in here is tough. A lot of Anubias. A lot of Anubias. Like you can see how long the rhizomes are. Most of them need to be trimmed down and kind of redone. And an ADA tank over here. Yeah. That's an algae farm kind of on purpose now. Um, okay. So there's 12 little yellow Neocaridina. You can see the one on the moss ball there. Okay, yeah. Um, this was kind of my first vaguely serious attempt at doing something different as far as like pseudo aquascapes. Mm -hmm. And I had this long-term goal of I'll put shrimp in it. Um, and eventually when I knew I was getting some shrimp, I started letting algae grow on purpose. Okay. After um, a, a lecture at my local club from a gentleman named Eric Lucas. Yeah. It was like, when you get this certain type of algae, it's actually amazing for shrimp, leave it because it'll give them a continuous feeding ground. Mm -hmm. And I happened to have been growing that type of algae. So I just nice. let it do its thing. Yeah, and they're buried, I can see. Yeah, uh, and with yellows, I mean, they grow super slow. Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to be a long game. It's not like I'm growing these for fun. Some rare plants in here. <laughs> yeah, so that's the, the fun part. Yeah. Um, so there's some of the big ones. There's the two types of the white Anubias. So there yep. is variegated and marble. They're technically okay. two different. They look very similar, though. Yeah. Um, and then there's Anubias pangolino. 
Yeah, on that's the rock. a tiny, tiny one. Yeah, it's so cool. And then on the the far left there, kind of hidden in that nook, uh -huh. there's a super rare uh, boost okay. that I got from Karen Randall when she was in town for our club called Mini Aurora. Hmm. Um, and that's just like it's just been in there for a while. It was teeny, teeny, tiny when I got it, and now it's yeah, teeny tiny <laughs> instead of teeny, teeny, tiny. And there's some other like not common crypts in here. Um, there's like is that the, like Renekii white or no? That's actually just regular Renekii when it has okay. no CO2. Oh, okay. <laughs> so well, Renekii mini with yeah, no yeah, CO2. Yeah. Um, I wish it was white. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. But when you don't give it CO2. Uh, for the mini, it doesn't get full red. And okay. also, this hasn't had really high nutrient doses since I put the shrimp in. Yeah. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to stress them. Sure. They're pretty new. I've only had the shrimp for I think a month now. Okay. Um, and then there's some star grass and some like random simple stuff that's in there. But there's kind of a, a hodgepodge of random rare things and common things all at the same time. Nice. Then over here, yeah, Rainbow Community Number Two with a goldfish. With a goldfish. Yeah. A shabunkin. So that guy uh, is blind. And as he's gotten older, he lost his little orange patches. Huh. And um, I've read that sometimes they do that. It depends. But as far as the, losing the color and just going kind yeah. of milk white. But I got him originally with a purpose to eat duckweed out of tanks. Right. Move him around. And I, I named him Cycles just because I would cycle him tank to tank, mm -hmm. killing duckweed. And nowadays, he's getting big enough where he probably has to find a home with a, a goldfish person that has a pond or something much larger than sure. what he's in. He's about the right size to where he should go to something bigger. Yep. Uh, and then you have kind of, I guess I'd say like my other favorite rainbow fish of it all the stuff. So you have the Running River before, and then these are the uh, Glossolepis wanamensis, yeah, the, which is the emerald rainbow. Green dragon also? Is they call it the green dragon? Um, sometimes I know that like the red version they call the red dragon. Yeah, I do know that. Yeah, And it's more common to just call them generically the emerald. The big thing okay. is when you find the ones that are bred in like the Florida ponds and stuff like uh -huh. that, they have a much more kind of brassy, bronzy color to them and very little of the green. Hmm. Um, these happen to be from probably like the best line in the United States, which is a gentleman named Mark Nicholson who has them. And they're just very little of that brassy color usually only when they're kind of displaying and mostly that deep green nice. and they're they're a pretty unique rainbow just because they get those super long fins like you can see on the smaller boy he's got the real long ones that he always has on mm -hmm. display uh, and then there's some other stuff like there's a random turquoise in here there's a some of the atinjo bosmana in here that came from rosario lacourt's line okay and then as you can tell by the torn up sword plants yeah there's some blackos in here that have been between uh, a minor nutrient deficiency because the floating wisteria has been eating all of the the nitrate out of the water mm -hmm. and the blackos they don't look the the healthiest in the world but like the center growth is plenty clean and fine sure. so they're just chewing on the old stuff yeah and I'm, I'm okay with that it's the amazon lace plant <laughs> i yeah it's uh there is a big madagascar lace that's yeah. in it's it's in weak mode well that is a huge bulb yeah, so that thing will get uh, up to four foot long leaves on it when it goes nice. in its cycle. It's in. It's just starting to come back. If I put CO2 in this thing full time, it would always have leaves. But mm -hmm. I don't do CO2 on this thing. Although pretty soon CO2 will come to this whole room nice. in really small amounts. And then the crypt there is actually another kind of rare crypt. That's Nurii Pahang mutated. I love crypt Nuri. And it's... Um, I wish we could buy it. it it's weird because like most of the Nuri eye stays pretty small. Yeah. Where the Pahang mutated, especially if you give it CO2, will get really tall. Hmm. Um, and gets these huge, big, broad leaves more like a Wendetti eye will. Yeah. Uh, it's a really cool plant. And when it's fully colored up, it has like this bright pink kind of trident vein pattern on it. Nice. But that re usually requires CO2 to get that to show fully. All right. Okay. So kind of the last tank here... This is my, I jokingly call it my like retirement home. Okay. Because normally it's like fish that I've adopted from people um, will go here. Or if I have like color calls for my guppies, they'll end up in here typically. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm a big softy. I don't euthanize anything. Right now, temporarily, it has my wild caught rainbows in here. So these are all Melanotania rubro striata, which is the okay. red striped rainbow fish. 
Yeah. And you probably best see it in that boy kind of dead yeah. center right there. He's one of the two dominant males that shows his color the best. Um, those will be going in a 75 long that I have in my living room that's finishing its cycle. It's basically at end of cycle, but still dealing with a little bit of diatome. Nice. Once that's done, they'll go there to get more room. They were originally in a 40 long, but it being an older tank, I uh, had a small leak happen and I just immediately pulled them out and swapped out tanks because I had that acrylic kind of ready to go somewhere and it just presented nice. the perfect opportunity. Um, I'm like, you know, testing out those Zis Airstones. I like those things quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, I was, I was going to talk to you after the <laughs> recording. I was like, so why do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, beyond that, like long term, there's my empty tank over here and yeah, some there's art lots of stuff up. that can be set up still. Yeah, there's there's lots of room. There's lots of yeah. stuff to do. I got a lot of art to put up on walls and yeah, over here there's a lot of awards. So Bentley. Is how many times over are you a master aquatic horticulturist at this point? Um, I'm at seven now. I just won't okay. get that award until our next club meeting. Yeah. And then I should, I'll probably be this year's um, top HAP person, so horticulture awards program. Okay. Um, so it'd be two years running. Yeah. Um, and you can see kind of like how many plants he's submitting because that was like 518, 418, 118. Like, so he's going through the entire program in the span of sometimes just a month. Like that's how many plants you'll cycle through and play with. Yeah, I um, I like to refer to myself as a plant psychopath. Yeah, <laughs> just that I I kind of have this this philosophy of um, don't let anyone tell you something is too hard to try when it comes to plants. Yeah, or that you can't do X or Y. Um, I I just think I think that the level of plant education is too low. Mm -hmm. I think that there's plenty of stuff we can learn. We're just not willing to experiment enough, so I sure. will do that um, because I'm, I'm a crazy person. And, and you <laughs> share that info on YouTube with people? Yes, uh, right. very, very frequently. Um, one of my big series is about plants. I, I like educating about plants because I love growing plants. Uh -huh. And I think if we get more people educated on how to do plants well, the hobby as a whole gets better. Yeah. And I'm, I'm that weird Zen mentality where I'm always chasing my own goals always trying to better myself, but then if I can better others around me, it like, gives this pseudo competition for me to rise that much farther. Sure, that um, makes sense. And I'm just, I, that's how I, that's how I, my competitive side is usually with myself. Yeah. And that makes it fun for me. Awesome. Well, check out his channel and uh, thanks for having us. Thanks a lot. <laughs>